So I'm Joe Healy. This is Bytes by MSDN. Today we're going to talk to Yuval Lowy about some Azure cloud patterns and practices and things like that. So uh, give me uh, your overview in 25 words or less. About myself. About yourself. I'm the principal of Fine Design, where we specialize in .NET architecture, do a fair amount of training. I'm also an author. My next book is the third edition of my WCF book should be out end of summer. Speak at conferences, what white papers. Very cool. I have a few of your books, so uh, nice stuff. So uh, you've been doing a lot of talks on uh, Azure and the service bus, and you're, you're a renowned architect in this area, and we've only got a couple minutes. So what I, what I want you to do is if I'm coming from a traditional WCF service background, and I'm going to be thinking about things like Azure and service bus, what are a couple just the top three patterns and practices I should really pay attention to in that space? So the first is actually more, less of a pattern, more of an approach. The service bus is not the same as Azure hosted. You still run the stuff on premise. Mm -hmm. We just use a service bus to connect the client to the services. The service bus by and large replaces the WS binding. Mm -hmm. You don't really need expose directly a web service. You let the service bus expose your functionality. And it's like the ultimate connector between the client and the service. In many respects, all the things you used to do before still work just more flawlessly smooth and none of the issues with DMZ and firewalls and credentials, those problems go away. So that's the first thing to consider. It's not a massive infliction in that respect. The massive infliction is something else entirely. It turns out that building applications that use a service bus, this intermediary in the cloud between the client and the service, is a very novel way of extending applications. And the reality is that when you are doing uh, aspect orientation, we are doing interception-based invocation, you want to be always as feather light as possible because there's always going to be something in between. You want to minimize it. So you always try and kind of like tweak, tweak, tweak. How do I make it right. less intrusive? But with a service bus, just the latency of the journey from the client to the service bus and service bus to the object far exceeds whatever you can do, usually in interception, which means you can go very aggressive as to what you do in the service bus. So I've used a service bus as the ultimate way of extending any application. Now, today there isn't that much you can do. You can just use the baby steps, the stepping stones for doing these things. Uh, they, today you can only do buffers. Uh, they're going to announce some other things you can do in our session uh, tomorrow. I have a session with them <laughs> tomorrow, so I know what they're going to say. But you can see the things that they used to do in the CTPs before they released it, specifically the routers that let you install a policy in the cloud, how the messages are routed, and queues that let you persist messages until somebody's ready to receive them. But the ultimate way of thinking about it is you can install any kind of policy, conceptually, anything from logging to any kind of custom code to execute as the message is intercepted between the client and the service. And that's absolutely huge. Yeah, so it's a uh, uh, very flexible pattern invocation plus a worldwide service bus that you can integrate into your on-site yep. applications. So uh, for a traditional architect going into that, it becomes a lot less engineering on their side as far as the actual service bus layers and trying to make their things communicate and they focus on their on-premise stuff? That's always the case, what yeah. architects should do, add value to the customers yep. and not really worry about the, the mundane plumbing. But the service bus, while it was designed to address the specific connectivity issue of web services, which fundamentally is a lot of work to deal with virtualization, load balancing, firewalls, network other translation, all of that problem goes away with the service bus. In fact, we have customers that are using the service bus in the intranet. You've got building A in one segment, building B in another segment, and they cannot get IT yes. to allow them to talk to each other, say, forget about that. We're just going to hop to the cloud and come back uh, as a way of connecting the client to the object. And so that's a traditional spot for what the service bus has evolved to address, but it's a, such a great way of dealing with security, with throughput, with scalability, with extensibility that I foresee that to be the ultimate way of doing these things. Think about it from a security standpoint. Nobody ever sees your service. There's yes. no way of ever mounting an attack on your service. They have to contend with trying to attack the Microsoft data center. Good luck with that. <laughs> I have a blue badge, and I can't even get near the front door of that thing, so that's a lot of fun. They do have a trailer downstairs at TechEd, so uh, you can see part of the trailer. Uh, I've been pretty amazed with the number of clients that have been coming to me and saying, you know, we've got geo-dispersed facilities, and we want to start using your service bus to connect yep. our facilities. And that, that's just an interesting trend, which I didn't think would happened when I first read about it, but the client demand on is. Let me stick my neck out and make a projection. I think the service bus is going to be more used in these clogged intranet scenarios than it is as true web services. I like that. That's uh, that's pretty cool. Yeah. So, uh, you know, there's, there's worldwide glue that we can get out there and harness that's all right. of our pieces together. And, and it turns out that because you have this ability to harness this massive 
horsepower that Microsoft has for the service bus, certain scenarios that are simply impossible without it become possible. For example, suppose you need to notify about some kind of an event to a large number of subscribers. And let's define large as even a few thousands. Mm -hmm. In today's technologies, you have a very, limit, very limited option. If you do it in a loop, then there's going to be a huge discrepancy between the time the first one got it and the last one. Yeah. If you do it on multiple threads, if you have 10,000 of them, are you going to spin 10,000 threads? It will yeah, kill your system. Yeah. If you do it, so the other option is, of course, to use a thread pool of some sort. But for any size of a thread of pools, I can give you a scenario where you have too many subscribers. And so what the service bus will do here in this scenario is take your message of notification and multiplex it across 10,000, 10 million, 100 million, it doesn't matter, subscribers. And the ability to notify the same level of service, millions of subscribers, opens up business scenarios that are simply impossible to do today. Well, that's, uh, that's pretty cool. I like, I like that idea, this worldwide service bus, the, uh, the idea of uh, you know, using it to extend uh, existing applications, pull them through, leverage them out, and basically easy to implement and manage. And think about other issues like discovery. Yeah. It's very difficult today to do discovery across network segments. Uh, I've implemented a technique, I'm going to publish it in MSTN magazine, yep. it's also in my next book, how to do discovery on a service bus. So think about it, it's like the ultimate class factory. Yeah, in the world of object orientation, seasoned developers have learned that you always want to encapsulate the type, so that you don't bury the type in the client code. You go to a class factory yep. and say, give me somebody that implements that interface. But with a service bus, addresses kind of like replace yep. types, and you can actually put discovery on top of that. Well, cool. That's been an awesome uh, overview of the service bus and uh, a really cool pattern that hopefully people will think about using, especially in some geo-dispersed and worldwide locations. Uh, this has been Joe Healy with Bytes by MSDN with Yuval Lowry of iDesign.net. I want to thank you all for watching and uh, have a great day.